Hi, Electric Crew here. While the ST70 clone amplifier is finished. I'm pretty well pleased with how it came out. It sounds pretty darn good. So, let's get into it and I'll talk a little bit about it. Here is my Dyna ST70 clone. I put it in a nice, heavy aluminum chassis. Under this area is the driver board from Tubes for Hi-Fi. I used a 12AU7 for the first preamp tube, 12BH7s for the drivers for the output tubes. You can see the indicator lights from the auto bias board indicating the status of the output tubes. I have L34s in here now, uh, tube amp doctor, L34B STRs. They sound pretty nice. This is the heat sink for the regulated DC on these three tubes. I really didn't need it. It wasn't necessary, especially for the driver tubes. Maybe so for the preamp, depending on how you wire. But I had the board and I had stuff lying around. I used items that I had here to build this because Lord knows parts are so expensive. I ordered a couple Gold Lion KT77s. I have two already. So I'm going to try those in here. My boy, those guys are expensive. This is the Hammond Choke, Power Transformers, and Ed Core. The two output transformers are Hammonds, but Tim Smith, he's one of the users over at Fun with Tubes user group. But Tim's an avid amplifier builder. He's built a lot of them, and he had these spec'd out to be custom wound from Hammond, and they sound pretty darn good. This is a CE capacitor, similar to what's in the regular ST70s, and I had it already. I have a couple that I keep handy for repairs, so I just used it. So all in all, it turned out pretty good, and it's a really nice sounding amplifier. So let's have a look underneath and see what I did. Here's a chassis view. You can see what I did and how I wired some of the items down here. Let me zoom in a little bit and talk about some of what I did. Here's the driver board from Tubes for Hi-Fi and the auto bias board. I mounted the, extended the LEDs for the status lights on this board, which you saw the blue LEDs up top, and I used these connectors, but these wires, gosh, they were so thin that I thought that a little bit of vibration and they would break off down here, so I put a little RTV on there to hold them. A little vibration, who knows. I mounted the power supply caps. Normally these caps on this board are on top coming through an ST70 chassis where that board sits on top. I flipped it around, but I wanted them underneath, so I mounted them here, and also I put some posts and mounted the other two down here. The power supply board I had laying around, I removed from a project that was from Glassware Audio, so I just used it. I had it sitting around. I might as well use it. And as I said, things are so expensive nowadays, and I had a lot of these components. I removed the high-voltage power supply caps, and I wired it to the CE CAN cap up here, similar to what you do in an ST70 clone. I originally was going to put two CAN caps here, uh, but I decided to mount these here, and I used a CL90 on the input to the power transformer to cut the voltage down a little bit and bring it up slowly. And these guys get real hot, so I thought this would be a nice place to put it, and I put a piece of screening there so to let the heat out. 
these power supply caps normally that came with this or these ones were rated at 350 and 250 while the voltage was a little bit even a little bit higher on this I think the new boards come with 450s but I used the 3.9 K I do believe to cut the voltage down some and I just mounted them this way these are Six or 500 volt, yeah, but your 450 would be fine. 450 would be fine here too, but these these actually came with it, so I used them. They were the ones that they wanted me to put here. These are 100 microfarads, or all four are hundreds, but I moved them over here because the voltage at this point is a little lower. When this turns on, the power transformer, the Edcore power transformer, puts out a little more higher voltage, so I kind of upped everything a little bit. That's why I put a 600 volt here, and the CE can cap is rated at 525. This is an Anatec 10 volt portal I put in to run the section here for the regulated DC on the preamp tubes. I had it, so I used it. This little transformer here, these boards now come with this transformer on them. I didn't have it at the time I bought it with all this they want you to isolate the AC just coming in because this is coming off this transformer if you have a center tap going to ground this one doesn't but I still had a little bit of read a little bit of leakage to ground between these points and I figured well I'll just put it in any way I had it this Transformer will run from uh, 6 to 12 volts. This whole border runs 6 to 12 volts. Uh, this is tube for high, tubes for high fi board, but they're actually, I think it's, I'm not sure if it's Eurotube.eu where the, the Czech company that makes these. I don't know. I'll put a link to everything down in the description. But the USA dealer for this these boards is Erdhard Audio. I'll put those there also. Or you can buy them from Tubes for Hi-Fi. But if I was to rebuild an ST70, if I came across one, I would use the driver board that Erdhard Audio sells. It's much nicer because it has a complete power supply for the whole amplifier on it. If you look over there, You'll see what I mean if you go to their website. It's a little more expensive, but if you have an old ST70, you have everything all on one. Power supply, board, and everything all on one board. You don't have to have, to have an extra power supply or those other power supply boards that some of the other outfits are selling. I think the, uh, the Dyna, sell the Dyna boards. They have a power supply board to upgrade your Dyna. But I like the one from Erdhard Audio. It has everything on the one board, power supply and all drive tubes. Plus, it has optical tubes, so I think you can use uh, six LS7s in them, which is a little better tube than a 12AU7. This, These are stub, snubber networks to... If you've ever listened to an amplifier, tube amplifier for a long period of time, and you say, gee, it's really tough on the ears. You got some high frequency stuff going on here, and it sort of tames that. I'll leave a link. Tim Smith over at Fun with Tubes, uh, one of the users again, he has a nice article on Max's website on negative feedback. And he talks about installing these snubbers. And how you figure close to what you might need for the specifications. I'll show you on the schematic. But as far as the feedback goes, you can't see it here. On this board, I use the board, factory board from Tooth for Hi-Fi, the, the specs that were called for the feedback components, the resistor and capacitor. With these 12 AU7s, the feedback is really low on this. The uh, but what I did was I mounted 
because I'm using different transformers. I was using Tim Spec transformers. I have a, you can't see it on this picture, but I'm on a couple posts here where I could add or subtract some values for the feedback and hone it in on it. I have those values that work for me with these transformers on the schematic. The uh, board, little boards here for the ELPS farm controls. I had these boards and the controls. Those ELPS, they're kind of made to mount in the PC. The ones that I use, they have a short pin, so these boards work nice. The uh, twisted pair for the input on the inputs here. And uh, that's about it. So let's go have a look at the schematic and check that out. I'll talk a little bit about that before we're done here. Here's the power supply. A little bit of quick schematic of what I did. You can see the, the Edgar XPWR214 here. It puts out 360, 360 at 400 milliamp. Uh, two amp fuse, uh, CL90 in series with the transformer here. I have some hex thread diodes in here because these guys are rated at 1200 volts. Even if you put 1000 volt diodes, sometimes you get a little bit of uh, stuff in there you don't want that can, a little bit of transients that can actually kill your diodes. These are nice and heavy diodes. And the first capacitor is on the CE capacitor. That's 80 microfarads. I have the Hammond 159T, 2.5 Henry at 300 milliamp there. And the next, or these, the next capacitor is that 50 microfarad I tacked onto the power supply board. And then these two are part of the CE CAN capacitor and that's giving me a nice 460 volt when everything's fired up and the everything's in operation and this last capacitor is also in the CE CAN and it gives me a nice 346 volts going to the driver board and I used ended up to get the voltage I wanted was 3.9 K on here I think the the, uh, if you're using original Dynaco because of the power transformer, I think they're, they're uh, two, 2K or something. I'm not sure what spec there. But the 70 volt bias goes to the bias to the uh, driver board connection. Uh, the the uh, 6.3 volts for the output tubes. And here you have the Antec uh, power transformer. Actually, this schematic is wrong right here. I don't have it running through the CL90. I have it after the fuse. I have to change this schematic. And it's connected after the fuse. So the CL90 only goes to the power transformer for the rest of the circuit. And this is a four way bridge, an LD1085 to regulate the voltage down running the 12. These 12 volt tubes with the six in the six volt filament option and uh, 1287 pulls 300 milliamp with those filaments in parallel. The 12 BH7s pull 600 milliamp. So, right now, there's a 1.5 amp load, and this transformer has more than enough capacity. It's rated at 25 VA. So, if I wanted to, I could put another 12 BH7 in here and a little bit of power ID or power LED. Well, let's look at the uh, schematic for the amplifier itself. Now, this is just one channel shown here, and this is the, I redrew the tubes for hi-fi schematic, so it's uh, basically the same as what you get when you buy the board. So this transformer again, this was a custom transformer spec by Tim Smith. And we have uh, 
four and eight ohms. And also, I mentioned about the feedback where I had to make some adjustments. If you are running off an eight ohm tap, you need to change the feedback components. I ended up what worked for me was 5.5K and 320 picofarad capacitor worked out well for me. There's a, a formula, I think uh, Bob Latino, the fellow who designed the circuit in the first place, he mentioned that in one of the forums. Um, what you need to do if to even to a stock Dynaco to change the feedback resistors if you're running off the 8 ohm tap. Um, I'm probably never used the 4 ohm tap, but there it is there. This is that little snubber network that goes between the the uh, from the from the uh, power supply, uh, the uh, high voltage going into the output transformer to the plate. Same here. And ended up 5.1K to nanofarad is what I used. And there's also, uh, I added a, a snubber circuit on the input of the 12BH7s. That's 15K and 120 picofarad worked out good. I mean, you can look at the waveforms on your scope and, and make adjustments. I think Tim used some, uh, the 15K, I think Tim used, uh, mentioned, mentioned to me to start out with a 220 on here, but I ended up 120 seemed to work fine. And that's it to basic, you have uh, the connection going to the auto bias for the uh, negative bias and also on the cathode here. I'm running these tubes at 40, 42 milliamps. So when you set the bias on the auto bias board, you're setting it to 0.42 volt. And it's pretty simple other than that. So if you have any questions, I'll leave some information in the description, uh, some links for some of the things. And if you have any questions or comments, Send them to me. The more questions asked, the more I learn. You'd be surprised at what I've learned from guys asking me questions about things and making me think. <laughs> so, have a good day.